My name is Peter Van Valkenburg, and I'm the Director of Research at Coin Center, an independent nonprofit focused on the public policy issues affecting cryptocurrency and public blockchain networks. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the world's first cryptocurrency, and it works because of the world's first public blockchain network. What does Bitcoin do? It's simple. It lets you send and receive value to and from anyone in the world using nothing more than a computer and an internet connection. Now, why is it revolutionary? Because unlike every other tool for sending money over the internet, it works without the need to trust a middleman. The lack of any corporation in between means that Bitcoin is the world's first public digital payments infrastructure. And by public, I simply mean available to all and not owned by any single entity. Now, we have public infrastructure for information, for websites, for email. It's called the internet. But the only public payments infrastructure that we have is cash, as in paper money. And it only works in face-to-face -face transactions. Before Bitcoin, if you wanted to pay someone remotely over the phone or the internet, then you could not use public infrastructure. You would rely on a private bank to open their books and add a ledger entry that debits you and credits the person you're paying. And if you both don't use the same bank, well, then there'll be multiple banks and multiple ledger entries in between. With Bitcoin, the ledger is the public blockchain, and anyone can add an entry to that ledger, transferring their Bitcoins to someone else. And anyone, regardless of their nationality, race, religion, gender, sex, or creditworthiness, can for absolutely no cost create a Bitcoin address in order to receive payments digitally. Bitcoin is the world's first globally accessible public money. Is it perfect? No. Neither was email when it was invented in 1972. Bitcoin's not the best money on every margin. Uh, it's not yet accepted everywhere. It's not used often to quote prices, and it's not always a stable store of value. But it is working, and the mere fact that it works without trusted intermediaries is amazing. It's a computer science breakthrough, and it will be as significant for freedom, prosperity, and human flourishing as the birth of the internet. Hey everybody, Skyler here, and in this video, I want to talk about uh, Bitcoin for a bit. I want to talk about what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin is to me, and how I'm so why I'm so invested, and not just like financially, but like emotionally. And I, I want to learn about it every day. I want it to get adoption. I want to talk to people who are brand new into Bitcoin. I want to talk to people who who are familiar with the word, but don't really understand any of the technology and don't really get it. Um, those are the people I kind of want to talk to right now. If you kind of understand what blockchain is and you've had conversations with people and you're slowly getting it, like maybe this video isn't right for you. Uh, but um, here's the deal. I, I was trying to um, send a video to somebody to just share with them what Bitcoin was. And after like an hour of searching, I couldn't find anything that I felt was like that explain the story they need to. I actually found an Andreas Antonopoulos video that was pretty good. Um, if you don't follow him, you should definitely follow him and watch his videos. He's freaking awesome. I want to kind of take a step back and and um, and and talk about what Bitcoin is for people who don't really understand technology or anything like that. Because I I know I struggled with it a few years back when I start when I started learning about it. And I actually learned about it wrong, and then I learned about it wrong again, and then I finally learned about it the right way. Um, but uh, so yeah, that, I guess that's what this video is. And and I'm really sorry. I'm already two minutes deep, and I, I apologize. I, I I record these videos so much. I've done this video. I know for sure this is like my seventh video today. I, I've recorded, and I always just re-record. And I don't I don't know why. I, I never say anything the way I want to say it, and the way it's like coming through in my mind, the way I feel about it, or, or whatever. So. I really apologize. I'm gonna try to go through this, you know, as quick as I can with the best amount of, you know, with the maximum amount of understanding. Hopefully, to help you, help you if if this video is for you. I don't know. So, um, here's the deal. Let me talk about. Well, before we talk about what Bitcoin is, I want to rewind time for a second and go back to Bitcoin's beginnings. 
So first of all, Bitcoin was created in 2009 by somebody named Satoshi Nakamoto, and, and nobody knows who this Satoshi Nakamoto is. There's been people who have claimed that they are Satoshi. Um, there's, there's people that maybe they are Satoshi, but they're denying that they are. Uh, but all this was done over email, over forum boards, you know, it's been done all over the internet. Um, so no one actually physically met the Satoshi Nakamoto person. But uh, some people have been working with him since the very beginning of Bitcoin on this project, but they don't know who this person is. So um, in 2009, and a lot of people think that this is a response to the 2008 crash, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I think this has kind of been in the works since before that. But um, when 2008 crash ended up happening, I, 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 the only person that went to jail when, two th when that crash happened, when that real estate crash happened, was Bernie Madoff. All Bernie Madoff did, did was steal from a bunch of rich people. But what happened to the bankers who stole from the poor people? The government bailed their companies out from going bankrupt, um, and then they gave those CEOs raises who screwed everybody over. So it was like, obviously not everyone was, was that instance, but there was a lot of people who were involved in the crash happening that just got payouts for screwing everyone over, and then when the crash happened, they got paid out. And then the same practices that the shady practices that took place they got rid of those but then they just renamed them repackaged them and now they're still doing them today and everyone knows this but no one seems to do anything about it and so it's just like and and, and then you see all these like you know these uh, rallies where people are protesting and there's like hundreds of thousands of people or whatever and, and nothing happens right and so it's just like you know I feel like what what can you do like what can i do right i'm just a small person whatever and so when that 2008 crash happened it resonated with me when i learned about bitcoin because um what bitcoin essentially does is it, it, it all it really does is remove a third party from our banking system i mean it does more stuff than that but it makes it where we can still have all these financial systems that we have today but we're not going to be nickeled and dimed, so everything is going to be super crazy cheap or free. Um, plus, like they can't like if you deposit ten thousand bucks, they can use that ten thousand bucks and leverage trade it up to like close to a million dollars. But you can't do that, right? That seems messed up. So like it takes it it, it makes it where um, there's no there's no personal person that nobody owns Bitcoin. Nobody is a CEO of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, is ran by hundreds of thousands of people that help build the network, and you could actually be a part of that network. So essentially all Bitcoin did, in 2009, the Satoshi Nakamoto released this white paper, they called it. All, white, all a white paper is is just like a, a document that somebody typed up and it showed all the code and the reasoning behind it and how it's gonna work. And then people have been taking that white paper, they, that code, and they've been building upon it and making improvements and making the network faster and stronger and all this sort of stuff. But that network, essentially, you know, all these banks, um, uh, they, you know, you kind of need a third party in, in some instances because what if you want to send money to, you know, to London? You know, you don't really have a way of doing that unless you go through a third party. And then they nickel and dime you with all these fees and everything takes forever. Like if I was in San Diego, uh, for any of those not familiar with San Diego, it's a city that's right on the border of Mexico and California on the, on the United States side. Um, right on the other side of that border is Tijuana. It's a 20 minute drive. If I was in San Diego and I wanted to send $100 to, to my friend in Tijuana, the cheapest option would, it would take three days to get there um, for the money to, to come over and it would cost you 20 bucks. So that's the world we live in today, right? It's 2019, 2020, right around the corner. Like that's the world we live in where, um, you know, I can go get on my phone and I can video chat with 35 people around the world. Uh, I've been able to send emails instantly since I was a kid pretty much. Uh, talk on telephones instantly, fax, like all this, all this technology has been increasing like crazy, but yet our banking system is so ridiculously slow, right? So, um, um, so, and I think, I believe they do that on purpose because it's a way to nickel and dime everybody and, and, and keep everybody you know in their little cage or whatever i don't know but uh so what bitcoin does is say okay well we can we can run the software right we can make it where um you know as soon as i buy something from your shopping cart the, it'll automatically ship it and um, money will automatically go like everything can be automated and the code completely fine but we're gonna have to house this information somewhere right i mean these networks are gonna take power and computer, computing power. So like right now, like, like you know, you get a chase, or you go to, you know, you go to some of these big banks, 
Um, they have servers all over the world, right? Um, and and uh, and they're huge warehouses, and they cost tons of money to buy all this computing power, you know, processing power, and and to and to put actual power to it, and um, you know, and there's all this like third-party stuff that's making sure the transactions are secure, and there's all this stuff that requires them to charge you all these fees and, and whatnot, um, and then uh, depending on the price of the fees is, uh, you know, um, a lot of it's uh, crazy high, and a lot of it's you know, it seems like it shouldn't be there, but we're kind of stuck in this situation. So all Bitcoin does is say, you know what? Like everybody has a, a, a computer with them, right? In their pockets, um, in your house, how many computers do you have? How many motherboards do you have, right? Do you have a smart, everyone's gonna have smart TV, smart refrigerators, like right? Xbox, Playstations, uh, you know, uh, smart microwaves. You know, my buddy has a smart microwave that you can talk to. It's like, it seems so weird and why would you have that? But. But people do it, and, and you know, and 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 why not take all of that technology that's already spread all over the world, and um, instead of you know buying one supercomputer for you know three hundred thousand dollars for a big you know whatever, uh, why don't you just uh, uh, use you know a uh, hundred thousand devices spread across the United States and use a tiny bit of my computing power when I'm not using it. And that way, the servers can be hosted on everybody's devices around the world, um, but they can't change or manipulate the information on it whatsoever. So that's really important as well. So back to the 2008 crash happened, right? When a lot of these bankers got in trouble, they were just shredding documents. They lost these documents. They, um, you know, whatever. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do that with, with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin essentially created a blockchain uh, where it's a um, it's information essentially uh, and uh, uh, essentially when you make transactions all this stuff it gets put into this block they call it and uh, every 12 minutes or so a new block gets created and that block of information before it um, all that information you can't change whatsoever. You would have to hack all the computers in the world and, and gain over 51% control of all the computing power and then start reversing transactions. You would need a supercomputer. It would cost hundreds, it's still, it's possible, but it would cost hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, it, it, it may even be easier to hack Chase Bank or Wells Fargo, I'm sure it would be. You know, it happens, you know, you hear about those hacks all the time actually. Um, uh, but uh, but the bigger that the, the, bigger the, the network grows for Bitcoin and the more people that say, hey, I want to use a little bit of my computing power to help uh, process these transactions, then um, the more people that do that, the harder it's going to be because they're going to have to hack all these, you know, computers and whatnot. So um, that's all that really Bitcoin is. It's just uh, a way to have a banking system without having to rely on an actual bank. Um, and that way I can just transact back and forth. So um, there's a lot of problems with Bitcoin. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's that Bitcoin's you know perfect um, because there are a lot of problems when it comes to it. Um, there's a lot of power problems. It does consume a lot of power, but so does banking systems, by the way. Um, so uh, um, you know you're going to have to use power to do these transactions one way or another. So. Um, um, you know, so Bitcoin is working on making it less power, you know, not, not consume as much power. Um, but, uh, it's also slow. So like right now, like Visa, I don't know what the number is. It's like 56, 42, 76. I don't know. I think it's like 56,000 transactions a second, 76. Anyways, it can do a lot of transactions per second, um, where Bitcoin can do 15 transactions per second. So um, when the network gets clogged up, essentially it takes a long time for the money to get to go through. Um, some people have been waiting days or weeks for your money to go through. Uh, and it, it, the more loaded the network is, the more it costs to push these transactions through. So there's a lot of people working on these problems. This is just a code that's been around for barely over 10 years. Um, think about the internet when it was very first conceived in the in the 50s and then started on in the 60s and in 1995 like the 1991 or whatever was when AOL came about and Netscape and then all of a sudden Google and now we have the internet that we have today right but um, you know it takes a while for this stuff to gain adoption and it may not gain adoption and so there's a lot of people that that say that Bitcoin is gonna you know crash and there's you know there's nothing behind it and you, you kind of just gotta like be you know 
figure it out for yourself, I guess. I mean, I can see Bitcoin. I mean, I can see uh, some sort of, and I'm not a computer whiz, so I could be not, I don't know what the crap I'm talking about, but there could be some program or something that ends up hacking that blockchain technology network and and then it makes the technology void. We gotta like rework things, figure it out, maybe replace codes, I don't know. So like there could be problems like that down the road and who knows. Um, I think a lot of people, I mean, there's been a lot of people working on that blockchain technology for the last you know, many years and, and so, I don't think that that's gonna be as, I think it would be easier to hack like a Chase or a Wells Fargo or something um, like that. Uh, but um, so far it's the most secure network that's ever existed. So, uh, but who knows what may happen in the future, right? Um, maybe, you know, the government could say, hey, no Bitcoin whatsoever in this country. They can't ban Bitcoin. They can't erase Bitcoin. They can't kick Bitcoin off. Like Bitcoin is its own network, by the way. China has tried to, to, to get rid of Bitcoin completely on two separate occasions. They couldn't. China could not stop Bitcoin. So now China is creating their own cryptocurrency because they can't stop it. And so let's, you know, um, let's create our own currency and, and try to compete it. But um, as long as there is two people with two devices um, on the network, then the Bitcoin network is, is gonna be there. So, um, you know, a million people would have to shut down their computers and everyone who's interested with Bitcoin would have to say, nah, forget about it. So when people say Bitcoin goes to zero, that's like saying every single person that's mining Bitcoin, that's working with Bitcoin, something's gonna happen where everybody's like, oh yeah, screw Bitcoin, right? Um, which I just don't see happening. It's super decentralized and um, no one can stop it, but there are ways that can make it or you could lose your money or something. So like, again, this video is not meant to be financial advice whatsoever. It's just meant to be me rambling on why I like Bitcoin. The reason why I'm so invested in it is because I would love it. For example, let's, let's say these corporate people back in 2008 had, the block, had, a, had a blockchain on, not, maybe not using Bitcoin, but they were using the blockchain technology in their company files. Well, you cannot change a blockchain. Um, uh, so, okay, how about this? Let, let me give you this scenario. Um, we, you know, uh, people in the CIA or whatever, all of their files go on a blockchain. No one touches that blockchain but the CIA, but the FBI, but the bank system, but whoever, right? Whoever needs to have someone looking over their shoulder, they can have full responsibility over looking over that blockchain. That being said, uh, a, a, a civilian agency, uh, a whatever, would be able to access that blockchain in certain events. So if there were crimes against humanity, if there was embezzling, if there was whatever, and they needed to investigate, then you can hop on that blockchain and look at records. The importance of that is you would not be able to change the records on that blockchain, and if you did, you would be able to find out. So. Um, if everybody had their own blockchain or a lot of people were on the same blockchains or whatever, every single thing is done on that blockchain is saved and recorded forever, right? If you wanted to change something on the blockchain that happened five years ago, you would have to hack every single computer and transaction and, and reverse five years of transactions, which would be, you know, maybe a super computer can do it, you know, in the future, but, uh, but hopefully by the time blockchain has been around that long, they would have figured out things around that. So at any rate, um, blockchain is aiming to be a, a global um, currency, right? So um, like in Venezuela, let's give that for instance. Uh, uh, in Venezuela, it would have cost you, whatever it would have cost you for um, a cup of coffee in Venezuela um, when, um, you know, a, a year and a half ago, 12 months after that, if you would have bought a cup of coffee, your your money would have gone up. You would have had to spend at least three to 400 times more for that cup of coffee. That's how much the inflation went up in, in Venezuela. So people like in Venezuela, what are they gonna do? They can't trust their government. So they have to trust other currencies. So they end up buying other currencies and that's how they end up storing their money, but it's really difficult. and. Um, you can get that cash stolen and you can't get a bank because that currency isn't in your country and there's all these problems when it comes to that. So Bitcoin for sure fixes problems like that today. People can own Bitcoin, they can transaction, they can transact with it. Um, you know, a lot, you know, Bitcoin, a lot of people th uh, call it a, a store of value. So 
Um, they, they don't really use it to transact for a cup of coffee. They use it to like hold their wealth, kind of like how people use gold, right? People aren't transacting with gold, um, but, uh, but a lot of people use it to store their wealth because you know gold rises in value and, and um, currency or fiat you know, always goes down in value. At any rate, I don't know what this video turned into, but uh, that's kind of like the landscape of what Bitcoin is and what's going down with it. Um, and, and I have no idea if Bitcoin is gonna reach a million dollars, $10 million, 100,000, you know, whatever. Um, but I believe in it because Bitcoin essentially is something that puts the power back into the people's hands. Nobody can forcibly take it away from you. Let's say you have a million dollars in Bitcoin. How that money is stored, it's on the Bitcoin network, always. You can't ever take it off, or save it on a piece of paper, and you know, it's always on this network that's, that's, that's run by these hundreds of thousands of people, million plus people, and it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as people hop on it and help build the network. But your money is always on this network. All you have is a password, essentially. Um, a private key, they call it, or a passphrase, or um, you'll essentially need to memorize um, a string of letters, a, a bunch of different letters, or sorry, words, um, and uh, things like 15 or a dozen words or something. If you memorize those words and in the order that they're in, uh, you don't have to have a password written down anywhere. You don't have to. The only way that you that someone would ever be able to access those coins is if you verbally told them or, or wrote that, that password down. So. No one's been hacked yet. Exchanges have been hacked and Bitcoin has been stolen off of exchanges. You're, you're hacking the exchange, you're not, hitting, you're not hacking the Bitcoin network. So it makes it where, you know, we can put people in positions where, it, where if they're honest or truthful or whatever, we're gonna know the truth no matter what. No one can delete records. Um, we, don't have to, we don't have to trust in a third party to handle, every, handle our information. And especially now with like all this, everyone's personal information going around. Do you really think that your banking institution isn't, um, isn't saving your financial records, isn't selling some stuff to third parties? If you have information anywhere, people are selling that information. All this stuff can be helped out, improved on, or completely gotten rid of and fixed with the Bitcoin network. So um, that's kind of the landscape. I'm gonna end it right there. Um, <laughs> we'll see how many people hate this video. I wanna make videos eventually every single day um, um, and hopefully they'll be more entertaining than this one right here. But, um, but yeah, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching so far. Um, uh, all those likes and subscribes for sure, thank you so much. And by the way, you wanted to uh, ask me any questions, uh, pop it down in the comment section below and um, I, I have all my notifications on my phone, so as soon as you send me a, a question, I should get it right away. Uh, I really wanna build this channel up and help people who are starting um, and, and help you keep your money uh, as much in your pocket and less in the money of scammer ICOs and crappy companies that are out there because uh, I, I tell you, um, I've been in this space for quite a few years and probably nine out of 10 times, somebody who knows me in real life comes to me with a project and they're like, hey, what about this project right here? Is this a good thing? Um, it's like, well, if you read the fine print, you'll notice you're gonna lose money every single day by using this network, you know, or uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's very confusing, um, so, um, and it's really easy to get swindled out of money. Um, you should never have to pay anybody to get information. Um, you know, maybe like a Udemy course, pay five bucks for something or, you know, but you should never have to, I heard people like, oh, there's a $1,500 buy-in and they're gonna tell you their top three coins. Um, so all this information you can get for free online and I'll show you where I go to get all my stuff. I'll, you know, so I wanna share my screen. I wanna get, I wanna self automate your learning process and make it as easy as I can. Um, I wanna make a better version of this video eventually, but uh, yeah. So I guess that's it for me. Thanks everybody. Sorry for wasting everyone's time who watched through this and like, dude, I knew all this stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, have a good one. Take care, bye.